Uh, I have put here some um, tabs open and there are about 10 of these and uh, I'm not very good in programming. Um, I have been slowly learning JavaScript and PHP and um, trying to uh, make some nice pictures for mathematics courses. Now I'm working as an um, online course material um, preparing guy here uh, and I'm working on linear algebra and I'm trying to make some pictures about vectors and lines and planes and some 3D things and also, I many times have some hobbies which are related to this and I get some fun idea and I try to do something like this. So uh, let's first go through of these uh, pictures uh, one by one and then we can perhaps take a look on the code, how it looks there. <clears throat> now today I was uh, able to do this opening box uh, visualization. So the box opens and closes and I can adjust the angles here. So this is the azimuth angle which will rotate the figure along the z axis. And then there's the elevation angle and we can look the object from the side or from above. So I got the inspiration to do this yesterday when uh, I got the link to this uh, JSX graph book and there was this nice picture. So I tried to do it myself and yeah, I was able to do it. <clears throat> and um, I have mainly two uh, ways in which I have been doing this. Uh, uh, 3D pictures. Uh, one is based on just using signs and cosines and making some functions. And the other one has been using this uh, projective transformations, which this uh, JSX graph can. Uh, it is built in there, and you can uh, define a three by three matrix, and then you can use this projective transformations. <clears throat> and of course, in this uh, 3D graphics, there will be some problems like which are not in 2D graphics. For example, here is already a one problem. Uh, the quadrilaterals here, they are actually all in the same plane. And JSX Craft does not know which one is in the front and which is in the back. So if the uh, quadrilaterals would be of different colors, then uh, it's not possible to make the uh, front one uh, like opaque that you cannot see behind it. But all of these need to be somehow see through. So this already one problem. And then when building such a picture, there will be really many of these points. And to be able to track everything, I would need I think that we need to use some uh, JavaScript arrays and go, go, keep the points in an array. So then we have some like logical way to structure the thing and we will not have too many points to handle. So I think these are already a couple of problems what, we'll, what we will face. <clears throat> so this was nice to do. Then I also did the tetrahedron, and as you can guess, this was a little bit more difficult because there are no, no uh, orthogonal angles here, so it was a little bit more difficult. But it would be, seem nice to show this to the students. <clears throat> so this was the happy thing of today, and. Uh, a year ago, I was trying to draw these 3D objects and 
I was able to do the same thing. At that time, I did some functions in Finnish point is piste. So I have named the functions according to the Finnish language. And uh, for example, to make this cube, my function will uh, make four points, which are in the bottom of the cube, and then four other points, which are in the top of the cube. And then uh, the cube has six faces, so I need to construct six polygons there. And everything works out. If I loop it, adjust the thing, maybe I put this to be number four. Okay, my picture didn't update nicely, but when I press F5, yeah, now the cube has stretched and everything is working out. And I can draw some lines. For example, here is the <clears throat> line from one corner to another. So I had this approach one year ago to make my own functions and to make these 3D pictures. And these functions are just made in uh, like thinking about these rotation matrices and you can rotate some 3D points mathematically by using this multiplying with sines and cosines and the code will have lots of these sines and cosines and of these two angles, this azimuth and the elevation. So this was my idea one year ago. Also, I wanted to plot some uh, graphs. So for example, here is a graph of the function sine of x times cosine of y. So it will look like there are some waves here. Uh, if it would be a still image, it would be difficult to figure out how does it look. It would need to be in some very specific uh, position, but uh, when the student can rotate the surface, then it is quite clear how the surface look, looks. You can get the idea how it works. And here uh, there was some how to do this thing, I had to use two for loops to make some uh, lattice of points in the xy plane. So the x coordinate and y coordinate, they move. And I will have some square of num points in the plane and then calculate the height of the function in each point. And again, using these signs and cosines there to make able to rotate this thing. So it is just done with a basic loop there. And I wanted to have a point in the plane which I can move and which will go in the sur surface. And it seems to work out. I think there is some maximum of the surface there. So there is the point. <clears throat> then uh, I would have wanted to uh, color the surface by using different colors. For example, like that, uh, the lowest places are blue and the highest places are red. And I was trying, trying to do that, trying to make uh, generate some colors to chase X graph, but and somehow it worked out, but um, not like super nicely. Maybe maybe the bottom is a little bit green and the sir, top is a little bit red, perhaps. <clears throat> Then the next idea would be to have this surface and uh, to make some tangent planes, for example. And in really down to earth way, I could calculate that like, uh, take three points from the plane and calculate the height of the function in all of these points and draw the vectors there. Uh, maybe make the vectors a little bit longer so it is nice to see them and somehow it would work out So at least I can demonstrate these partial derivatives here, but then how to make the plane? Uh, I got jammed and I didn't know how to do it again anymore. 
my head was jammed. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, it has been nice to find a way like this. Uh, the user can put the put the different functions there and draw them. I think this will look looks a little bit strange. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I put up now it should look nice, I think. So now there is this uh rotation surface of the parabola is there. Now it looks nice. <clears throat> so this was just done with this um science and cosines and working out the math there. Then uh I learned about this that the JSX graph can use this uh projective transformations. So then I got some another idea and uh, I made some editor for myself to uh, generate the JXS graph code. And uh, I have some buttons here, which will uh, give me some code here. And uh, there is some 3D to 2D functions here. So I have the sliders for these angles. And then I will generate uh, three transformations. There's the rotation transformation, which will allow me to rotate the function uh, with respect to the z-axis. And then there's the transformation, which will, uh, if you have something in the xy plane, you have a square, then the projective transformation can put it in to some uh, slanted square and it will look like 3D. And then this transformation will make the uh, adjust the height of everything. So the elevation angle is visible here. So there are the functions and then I would like to have the axis first. So now I can rotate the axis and look things from above and from the side. And then next thing would be to draw the XY plane perhaps. So it is here. So this was done just that um, it looks quite 3D. So uh, uh, with a for loop, I made these lines on the XY plane on both directions. And then uh, by using these transformations, I put them here uh, and it, it looks quite nice, I think. So how does the code look? It looks terrible. This was just six lines and now I need to create some points and make some access. And I'm now using these on uh, JavaScript arrays to keep con contain my points here. So I will not get lost. And I think there are two for loops there, which will make make this this grid of lines here. <clears throat> then the next thing I got lucky uh, in Java's in JSX graph there are these magnetic lines, so you can have a line and you can put a point with, and which will get stuck to the line. So then uh, I got lucky. Uh, let's make a three D point here. So the point on the xy plane will uh, be attracted to all the lines in the um, array there and with some nice properties. And the effect will be that uh, I have a 3D point here and its projection on the xy plane in the down is here and its projection on the z-axis is here. And uh, actually like this point and this point are free and then this point depends on these two points. And now uh, the point can be uh, attached with, by this magnetization to this plane here. So now it works out that when I spin the plane, 
also the 3D point moves there. This was some happy coincidence for me. But after this, um, uh, I dropped this idea and have not been working with this. I think there is some problem there I should. Well, yeah, I think I could make some uh, lines there and work out everything. Yeah, so possible to proceed with this. <clears throat> with these loops, it is possible to do give different kind of access and uh, depending on the situation, uh, they can be the best option, which will uh, be the most simple one and uh, useful. So this would be another way to create a 3D feeling. Uh, then I wanted to do some useful things for my students. So for example, we can look here uh, from the westmost part of Russia to the eastmost place of Russia. How far is the, how long is the distance? So I have a map here and uh, I'm not sure, maybe this in the Mercator projection and everything works out, or maybe there's some mistake. Well, it looks uh, quite nice, so good enough. And then for this path on the map, there are some uh, three options we, how we could travel that distance. We could uh, go straight through the earth. There's one line like that. Then uh, there is the wrong way to fly. So if an uh, airplane pilot looks at the map and flies according to the map, then uh, you can travel to in a stupid way. So this would be the not very nice way to fly. And then the third line here is this uh, great circle of the sphere and that's the smart way to fly so let's see for example uh, from this Greenland to this Svalbard here let's see how it would look or some other place okay yeah so if you fly from US to Siberia then don't fly don't fly on the same latitude or longitude, but you should cross the North Pole there. So these also done with the same system using this, uh, using these, um, the same things as here. <clears throat> um, then one problem in this 3D pictures would be that if you draw something which is three dimensional, then you need to stop somewhere. So for example, uh, if you draw these planes, then if you just draw the plane and you let it continue all the way, then the whole screen would be colored blue. And then it would be difficult to find out like, just at some moment you would see the plane to swipe and turn it side. So I think it would be best to, if you make any 3D picture, it is best to restrict it into some sphere. So there are some 3D line pictures here. For example, here is a plane and then there's the point closest to the origin there. And there I have drawn the normal of the plane. So to do this thing, I had to, uh, uh, of course, have the point in the plane and have the normal of the plane, generate some uh, direction vectors in the plane. And when I have two vectors in the plane, I can generate nicely this kind of octagon. If I have this kind of like orthogonal system here. So that was a nice way to do this. <clears throat> Then something what I would really want to do, uh, um, I did my PhD in complex analysis and about these 
analytic mapping. So you take some plane region and you map it to some other region. And because the mapping is analytic, then uh, it will preserve the angles. And uh, in this way, when you do analytic mappings of some real life pictures, you will get some very funny pictures. So for example, here is a cat. Uh, it is sideways and the mapping here is z to power two and uh, when the picture goes on top of the zero uh, where the derivative is zero then the power two will uh, twist the angles double and the picture will go on top of each itself so I would really like to do this thing with some 3D graphics. So it would be very nice to have a globe and to have some area on the map and to move the area in the map and it would move in the sphere. I would like to do this thing. So for example, this picture is done that I just generate a square of these numbers, a lattice of these points, and I generate this chess board here. And then I map all of the points here to the sphere and then generate these quadrilaterals there. So it is done in a very simple way. And how this is done, I have a picture and I from the each, each pixel, I will take the color and keep the colors in an array. And then I do this mapping and I have a lattice of points and to each point I will, to each um, polygon, I will just put the color from this array. So this is the way this is done. Uh, it would be very nice to do this thing but um, of course it is a little bit like <clears throat> uh, the computation is difficult and like you need to really com the computer needs to comp compute many things because they are like uh, all the pixels are done like pixel by pixel so if there would be some more smart way to do this of course it would be a happy thing and maybe this jxx graph is not the best tool for this but but it feels fun then uh, more about these projective transformations. These are not actually a, not actually a 3D graphics thing, but uh, I wanted to, I have a picture of my hometown. Maybe it's like 50 years old picture and it is difficult to recognize the places from here out. Well, I like to have a modern map and move a point in the map. And I would like it to move on the projective picture here. Uh, it took a long time to work this out, how it goes. And I'm happy to hear that Alfred told yesterday that now JSX Graph can uh, take these comments from the arrow keys. I also did some arrow key function here so I can move the point in the plane and in the map at the same time. I will try this new native property there soon, I think. <clears throat> yeah, so um, then a small, small glimpse on the code, how it looks. So um, these things were done with this signs and cosines and just calculating. And here it was, uh, already visible how we did the things. So we just, we had these three uh, mappings here, this rotating and then the projective mapping, which puts uh, a square grid, it puts to this slant grid here. So these were done with transformations and then how does this code look here? Mm. <clears throat> Uh, if I have a point in the 3D space, then I have some 
function which will calculate some the x coordinate of the uh, point in the picture by sines and cosines and same thing for the y coordinate and then these are to make these axes then i have some function like to put some 3d point to the plane uh, it was difficult to make these things i'm not sure if everything worked out nicely and then i made my points that they are um, this function will uh, take three coordinates there and it will make a point and yeah it uses this function this which makes a plane point up from a 3d point and how does that function look well i think here is something just there are these signs and cosines and these A and B are these sliders for these uh, user angles. So it is down to earth and it looks messy, but uh, somehow it works. Yeah, I think that's everything. <laughs>